Alison never had a save to make, so whether we're talking about your forwards or your defenders, Liverpool were miles ahead. And that's for the middle of the park. Again, you talk about machines. Wijnaldum and Henderson particularly, they've got this terrible habit of getting the ball and passing it to a red jersey <laughs> from, from 40 or 50 yards as well. But really, Liverpool, it was a machine today. Yeah. Short passing, long passing, scoring goals, creating chances. Just an absolute, an absolute pleasure to watch. And, and to, to that point, Leicester are a very good team. Listen, we, let's leave this 90 minutes out of it. Everything about Leicester suggests that they deserve to be where they are on the table. And this became the defining 90 minutes in both these club seasons, and, and, and certainly in terms of the title race. But as much as we were looking for storylines as to maybe why Liverpool would drop points or would lose, they were in Qatar, they're not fully rested, too much travel. Um, Leicester, after, after what happened against City and the bounce back, maybe this was, was their opportunity to really make this a title race and, and, and have Liverpool sitting uncomfortably on the edge of their seats. But nothing about this 90 minutes suggested that, that Liverpool were anything but the best team in England by an absolute distance. Um, and that really right now, the question is, who can, can even make them look over their shoulders at this point? Because on, on this showing, yeah. given everything, we've, all the storylines about Liverpool, this was as breathtaking a football match on, on their part as we've seen. Um, obviously, I send out the extra time question every day. Pretty much 50% of the questions are asking Gab whether now he would admit it is over. Of course, as it stands, 13 points clear at the top of the table, Liverpool. They do, remember, have a game in hand as well. For those of you who didn't see yesterday's show, Gab maintained that there was still a title race. But he also said, when facts change, opinions change. <laughs> as the fact that Liverpool were so good in that 90 minutes, change your opinion, Gab, and you now will admit it's over. Look, this is football. Until the math tells you that it's over, it's not over. Is it likely that Liverpool will win? Is it 99.999 repeating? Even I've stopped Likely that. that Liverpool will win the title? <laughs> yes. Are they the best team in England by a mile? And have they been the best team in England for the last six months? Yes. I don't see the need to go and crown somebody. If I were betting at good odds, sure, I would bet I would bet on Liverpool to win. And I think the what's been most impressive about them is that all the questions that have been raised from the travel to, to Fabinho's injury to the fact that, you know, let's not forget, Lovren and Matip were both out tonight. Um, uh, Oxley chamberlain was also out tonight. Uh, they just came back from, from, from Qatar. And they go out and they put on that performance. Uh, there's no question that if they don't win the title, they deserve to win the title based on what's happened uh, until now. What's but, the what's you know, the zero point zero one percent gab? Why why can you not just come out and say yes, it's over? Because this is Liverpool side. They've only dropped two points all season. They've drawn one match against United. There's no way that City are going to win all of their games from now until the end of the season. We saw Leicester's weak spots today. It's okay to say it. It's all right to say it's over. Um, it's fine. I mean, look, if 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 you want to say it, you go ahead and say it, but. I'm saying the incredible happens in football. And I think we need to bear that in mind. We, Liverpool have played less than half their games uh, this season. The other teams are at the halfway point. It, it would take something absolutely extraordinary, never seen before, phantasmagorical, if that's even a word. Oh. Okay? Oh, but yeah, I don't that's... see the point in anointing somebody as champions before the new year. But why? What changes in the new year? What can change? No, what will change? Everybody gets injured. Jurgen Klopp gets kidnapped by aliens. I don't know. <laughs> Something can happen. Oh, this is why sorry. you play the games. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, was it over at 3-0 in Istanbul? I mean, come on oh, now. Like, goodness me. That's a, that's we've a, seen stuff happen. Not like this, We've Gap. seen stuff not happen like before. That. Not even with Newcastle. We didn't, they didn't have the lead that Liverpool had. All the quality, all the absolute <laughs> and utter luxury of having a game in hand as well. Yeah, absolutely. And they will almost definitely win the title. But I'm not going <laughs> to crown somebody in December. I'm sorry. I can celebrate them as by far the best team that we've seen, uh, certainly this half season, 
Look, the last time Liverpool lost uh, to uh, lost in the Premier League was, if I'm not mistaken, was was the Man City game, January yep. 3rd. January 3rd, 2019. Think about that. That is absolutely out of this world. Yeah, yeah. it's always like you're trying to persuade me it's over again. Um, <laughs> sorry for bringing up Newcastle, Shane. That's all right. I especially <laughs> like the, the comment about they didn't have the, this quality. Newcastle didn't have the quality of this Liverpool. Thank you very much. True, though. Yeah. Well, they didn't. yeah. <laughs> uh, and they didn't have trainer Alexander on. No, they didn't. And goodness me. I think, I think what sums up him and Liverpool is the fact that the game's done and dusted at three and he runs 60 yards at least to get on the end of a ball from Manny and smashes it into the bottom corner. I mean, that's incredible. That's, that's desire, but it's, it's also quality. These stats are incredible as well. These last yeah. two seasons, Alexander-Arnold, 20 assists compared to like Adam Hazard, 15, David Silva, 14, Ericsson as well. See, that's, that's Mars stuff for a fullback. They actually have that many assists. That, that doesn't make any sense, actually. If somebody said, I've got a player for you. Yeah. His name's Trent Alexander-Arnold, and last year he had 20 assists. You go, well, what, is he, is he right. playing the front three? Or... <laughs> so, I mean, that's how good this guy is going right. forward. And the fact that... See, he's in the right team. Right. Because 90% of his game is spent looking forward, either playing balls forward or whipping balls in. So Liverpool is the perfect... Liverpool's the perfect team for him, and he's perfect for Liverpool. Go on, Gab. No, I was just going to say, the way, I, like, I think it's, it's, it's important to know here that um, the way Alexander-Arnold plays, yes, he's got a tremendous cross, a tremendous delivery, but he's really a midfielder, which is what he, he played, obviously, growing up, uh, who, who Klopp has reinvented in this position and turned him into, into the best in the world, or, or, or if not the best, one of the top two or three, uh, if you want to go quibble. He plays the position the way Danny Alves played the position mm. in his prime. When he gets the ball, he can do so many different things with it because he wasn't raised as a right back. I, I'd love, I've been curious, we'll never know, but if he were playing for a different team or with a different manager, I'm not sure he'd be playing right back. And maybe that's something we'll see later in the career. Maybe he'll develop into a central midfielder and, and just absolutely dominate in, in central midfield. But, but I think it's got more to do with his quality and the system that, that, that Klopp put around him than anything else. I, I, I totally agree. Listen, I, I don't think he, he... Either he doesn't play at right back or he's not loaded as he is, playing for anybody else in any other team. And because we've sat here and you question how good he is defensively. But when Jurgen Klopp, and as much as we talk about Liverpool and their facets and the front three, and we can praise everybody in midfield, when you look at them defensively, given the fact that by, in, in pure defending terms, Trent Alexander-Arnold isn't an, an out-and-out defender, more Dani Alves, as, as Gab rightly points out, and yet still he's able to put together a back four and a rear guard around that, around those deficiencies. It speaks more to Jurgen Klopp, I think, as a, as a manager than, than anybody else who would try to find uh, another hole to, to fit Alexander-Arnold into. Could he go anywhere else and do this? Was this a unique... In that position? Yeah. He can play that position. Yeah, I'm with Gab. If he, if he was to, to, to play in a team that had an orthodox back four, then he, he, he would actually stand out for the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. Right. He has to play in a side that either plays the way Klopp does as, with his full-backs or as a wing-back in a back three. Because he's not a full-back, 100%. He's a guy you need going forward. And this team, that's why I said both he and Liverpool are a, a marriage made in heaven because they both fit into exactly what both want to do. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.